Hello from Green Mopeds. So today we're taking out the new Teleria X3. This is the road legal version. Uh, on a little spin to let you have a look at it. Um, from the outset, I don't know if anyone's old enough, but think Rally Grifter. And this is sort of like the bike <laughs> that I'm riding right now. It feels like something from the 80s, like a push bike. Um, for those of you who don't know, Rally Grifter was uh, a little sort of Suron-esque looking bike from the 80s, push bike. And uh, this must be about the same size as that. It's quite uh, remarkable. Anyway, um, so this is the X3, as I said. Uh, it is the second new model that Teleria have brought out this year, uh, 2023. Uh, they showed it off at ECMA, and there were two interesting things about this bike. Well, specifically interesting things about this bike. One is its fixed battery, and the other is... Um, although you might not notice it from this review, um, they've gone to a two-stage transmission. Um, so on the Surons, of course you cannot um, talk about these bikes without talking about Surons. On the Surons you have two stage. You have a motor that goes to a pulley that then cuts across to the chain. And all other Telerias don't do that. And it was one of the arguments for being uh, for having a Teleria, technically speaking, was that they got rid of the pulley, which was uh, somewhat of a weak link with the Surons because the pulley used to break. And this one, though, has exactly that: has a pulley and two stage. Um, not saying it's right or wrong. It's just interesting that they didn't stick with the whole. Uh, one drive option. I have to say this bike is so small that I feel like putting my arms out to indicate. <laughs> it's quite funny. Um, to position it, it's obviously entry level, but it is road legal. So uh, as you can see, I've got mirrors, um, indicators, lights, all that sort of stuff. Uh, there is an off-road version. Um, and I suspect that Teleria sort of try to uh, kill two birds with one stone, actually, with this bike. Um, that is going after the off-road Suron Youth bike that's around. Um, assuming they have done that, then they've improved upon it because the Suron off-road Youth um, is 2.9 kilowatts and 31 miles an hour cheaper but uh, even so whereas this one is three and a half kilowatt base five kilowatt max so a lot more powerful it also goes depending on who you read the same speed as a Teleria Sting so 45 46 miles an hour which uh, for a bike that weighs 58 kilos is a little bit bonkers. Um, so I think the off-road one is definitely going after Suron Youth. Uh, we're just about to get one of those in, so it's, although it's a bit unfortunate that um, can't put it side by side, but uh, yeah, the, that definitely seems to me to be one of their target markets. And the other one is obviously just having another Teleria on the road that is lower cost even than the Sting. Um, but with a fixed battery. So that is the second interesting thing about this bike, fixed battery. So it is possible to get the battery out, but you have to lower the swing arm and it slides out the bottom. So it isn't really meant to be, you know, removable like all the other bikes. It's just that if you needed to change it, or we need to change it for you, then we could do that. Okay, um, 
have to say, for a bike that's so light, I'm not too surprised that it picks up quite well. Okay, so remember, this is restricted in this version. So this is an L1E. So moped license. You can write this on a 2001 driver's license or a CBT. Um, but it does have the de-restriction option and the off-road one is de-restricted by default. Okay, so you can, uh, and there are videos already out there showing you how to do that, de-restrict this bike, which would, you know, put it up there with a Telera Sting, a Suron Light B, but in a lot smaller package. Okay, so this is six foot long, 1.85 meters long. Um, as you can see, I guess, uh, very narrow. Um, I'm six foot one, so I'm the same length as this bike. Frame is very narrow, uh, 58 kilos, which is nothing, that's a light B. But it feels smaller, well it is smaller than a light B, um, just by looking at it. And part of that is that um, it's on 17 inch wheels, uh, and the road legal one is 17 inch front and back and the off-road one has different size front and back 19 and 17 okay so obviously meant for more sort of talky behavior let's call it that so while we're here you see color screen which is a first and there's a menu system in here which tells you things about the bike um, maximum speed all that sort of stuff you can set miles or kilometers if you needed to uh, stuff like that um, I would say that mode one is one of those pointless ones mode one is 16 miles an hour okay so I mean unless you want to stick on the 20 which in London is pretty much every road anyway apart from these ones like this um, mode one is 16 so unlikely to be used to be honest uh, and as you can see it basically just gets to its 28, 29 miles an hour, and that's it. It's pretty sprightly for what it does, um, but don't expect more than 29 in the restricted version. Okay. Uh, any colour, as long as it's this grey, is available. Okay. Uh, one of the other things that they've done, which uh, I might be able to point out to you now, is that it's keyless. So there are two little fobs that you carry around and you activate the slot button and then you put the NFC card onto that to start it. So there's no key. Um, there is a steering lock, so there is a key for that, uh, which interestingly, Teleris don't have, any other Teleris doesn't have, but uh, essentially keyless operation. Um, see, it just gets to its speed and that's it. I mean, obviously de-restricting it will uh, change the characteristics of this bike. Uh, so, yeah, they, they seem to have brought this out to just lower the cost of entry into this sort of on-road, off-road style bike. So, these are three and a half thousand. Uh, so, a little bit more than a Suron Youth at 3.3. Um, but, obviously, uh, a lot cheaper than now than the Sting R. Uh, the Suron Light B. Um, and even the Sting. But I do wonder um, a little bit the demographic that this is aimed at because it is so small. Look, look you know, <laughs> not saying there's anything wrong with it, but, you know, look at the tyres, wheels, tiny little things relatively. Um, but fully road legal. Obviously, uh, single-seater, just like all the other Tulerias. Um <coughs> not on the grant, uh, maybe yet, because uh, this was really only announced sort of like November time, so they've done quite well to get it out so quickly. Um, but uh, no grant, so we'll have to check what the warranty is. So as you can see, it picks up 26, 27. As I said, I keep feeling like I want to put my arm out. <laughs> Anyway, so 
there's not too much more to say about it bike other than the obvious things that you want to know. So uh, it's got a 60 volt, 40 amp hour battery. So that is the same as the latest light bees. So 2.4 kilowatt hours of power, uh, four hour charging. They quote 50 mile range, um, but let's say more like 40, I would say. Um, an interesting little stat that's coming up on the dash right now is your consumption down there, 33 watt hours per mile. So it would be interesting, I mean, this is flat out, remember? So I'm using 33 watt hours per mile. So you could literally do the maths and work out the range based upon that. Okay, that's, as you see now, it's gone to 32. It's not totally dynamic, I don't think. Okay, so you could literally do maths on w and work out the uh, ultimate range of this bike. Um, so four hour charging, 40, 45 mile range, three and a half thousand pounds, silver only, small, um, keyless, but still a Teleria. So this could be an ideal first bike for, you know, students getting to college. Um, you could buy a couple and put them on the back of a camper van. They're so small, 58 kilos. So most uh, camper vans have, uh, you know, like a 100, 120 kilo limit. So you could easily get two of these in the back of a camper van. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I guess it's a fun little bike, especially if you de-restrict it, which uh, we will look at doing. All right, so uh, I hope you found that brief introduction useful. Uh, obviously, these are quite sought after at the moment. Um, but if you want to organise a test ride, then uh, please let us know. We're in uh, West London. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at hello at green-mopeds.com. Please feel free to contact us through any of the other channels that we have and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Green Dash Mopeds. And thanks very much.